Hi folks, welcome back to AP Statistics with Mr. Robeson. Uh, we are starting Unit 4 today, and Unit 4 is on something a little different. It's called linear regression. So we're looking at lines, like stuff from Algebra 1 and Algebra 2 lines. All right, so the first thing we're going to take a look at is something called correlation. Then we're going to look at scatter plots, and then we're going to look how to describe scatter plots. So, you know, we have cusps for histograms and other types of graphs for scatter plots. We have duffs, like the beer in The Simpsons, except spelled differently. All right, so first up, we're looking at relationships between two variables now, and they're both quantitative variables, so they're both numerical data. So identify the explanatory and response variable for, from each of these and see if we can figure out the relationship. So short women are more likely to have heart attacks than average height women, while tall women have fewest. Hmm. All right, so we're comparing, looks like we've got short women, we've got tall women, and we've got average height women. And then we're also talking about heart attacks. All right. And we have more likely, less likely, fewest. All right. So the two things we're comparing is looks like the height of women and the likelihood of having a heart attack. So which one do you think is the X value and which one do you think is the response? Well, my guess would be the height would be the explanatory and the response would be the heart attack. So the explanatory, which remember is our x value, is equal to the height of women. And then the response, which remember is our y value, is the likelihood of a heart attack. All right, and we think as height goes up, that the likelihood of heart attack, let's see, tall women have the fewest, will go down. So short women are more likely to have heart attacks than the average height women, while tall women have the fewest. So the taller they are, the less likely they are to have a heart attack, according to this. All right, so that's how those two variables relate to each other. All right, let's look at the next one. Heavier cars have fewer deaths per 100,000 vehicles than do lighter cars. All right, so it looks like we're talking about the weight of cars versus the number of deaths for 100,000 vehicles. I'm assuming this is from car accidents. All right, so the explanatory variable, what is causing or what may be causing the fewer deaths would be the weight of the car. Think about it, if you're driving around in a tank, you're probably not gonna get killed in a car accident. Although you may hurt someone that's in a much smaller car than you. So the response here, or your y variable, is the number of deaths per 100,000 vehicles. All right, so as the weight goes up, the number of deaths also goes down here. So that's how those are related. All right, it doesn't have to be that way. They could both go up or they could both go down. All right, smokers on average die younger than non-smokers. All right, so we're looking at smoking and looks like the age that you are when you die. So our guess here is that what's explaining what's causing you to die would be smoking. So smoking versus not smoking. All right, and we could quantify this somehow by like number of cigarettes you smoke a day, or we could just say smoking versus not smoking. And the response... The y value here would be the age at death. A little morbid today, aren't we? All right, so as smoking goes up, the age of death is going down. So all of these are examples of uh, what's called a correlation. So it's two variables that are somehow related. In other words, like if one goes up, the other goes up. Or if one goes up, the other goes down. Or if one goes down, the other goes up. Or they can both go down. All right? It does not mean they're causing. So we're not, not talking about causation here. So we're not saying one causes the other. We're just saying that they're somehow related to each other. They could have no causation whatsoever. And there's a whole book on this called Spurious Correlation, which I have in the back of the classroom. 
A lot of good that does us this year, but it's there. All right, so there's not not causing each other. We're just saying that they're somehow related. It could just be completely by chance. Oh, and there's a puppy. It's a cute puppy. Look at those floppy ears. All right, so when we're investigating these relationships, all right, this is not necessarily on the AP, but it is good for you to know, especially in the age of, of COVID here, is, you know, you, you want to ask yourself some questions. So who are the individuals that they're, the data is describing? Like who's the, who's in the experiment? All right, what are the variables? So what's causing what or what's related to what's not necessarily causing? Why was the data gathered? So was it gathered for a reason? All right. When, where, how, and by whom was the data produced? All right. So whoever's producing the data, they may have a stake in this. They, they may want a certain outcome, and they may push things towards that outcome, like the Ford study we talked about with uh, using uh, what is it, hydroxychloroquine for fighting COVID-19. Like they, they basically cheated on that study in every way possible. All right. So that was not an honest study. All right. Let's look at another one here, a little less morbid, I guess. One effect of alcohol is a decrease in body temperature. To study this effect, researchers at a university give several different amounts of alcohol to mice, then measure the change in each mouse's body temperature 15 minutes after taking the alcohol. Mm -hmm. All right, so who's being described here? Is it people? All right, well, you kind of think it's people from the start here, but we're actually talking about mice. All right, so something that works for a mouse does not necessarily work for a human. All right, we often do studies in mice just to see if it works on a mouse because it's a mammal also, so it may respond similarly. But you also have to do these trials on humans to see if it works also on humans. All right, what are our variables here? Well, alcohol and body temperature seem to be our variables. All right, so alcohol would be our explanatory, and our response would be the body temperature. We're, we're asking, does drinking alcohol decrease the body temperature? All right, why was the data gathered? Hmm. I don't know. It's researchers at a university that are doing it. So there's our, our who that's doing the study. So they probably want to see if there's some sort of relationship between the two. All right, I don't know if there's anything nefarious going on here or anything bad going on here. Maybe the alcohol company asked them to do the research. Who knows? All right. But those are the things you kind of want to ask yourself when you're analyzing a study that you see on Facebook or in the news is, you know, who, who's the study on? Who's doing the study? Why are they doing the study? And what are the variables that they're actually comparing in the study? All right. So that brings us now to scatter plots. So a scatter plot is a collection of points made up of explanatory comma response for particular data values. All right, so each point represents a particular data value. So like if we go up here, this point was one person that had a height of about 150 centimeters and a weight of, looks like maybe 44 kilograms. So that would be one specific person in this study. All right, and all these dots represent a different person in this study. Remember our explanatory variable, our X variable, remember it has the X in it for explanatory, and our response is the Y. All right, so when we're looking at a scatter plot like this, we're usually asked to describe it or talk about the relationship or something along those lines. And when we do that, we want to remember DUFFs. And DUFF stands for the direction. So is it going up, positive association? Or is it going down, negative association? Or is there no association? Is it like flat or is it scattered all over the place? Who knows? All right. Is there something unusual? Like is there a point that's really far away from all the other points? All right. And that could be an outlier or that could be something we call an influential point. And we'll go over the difference between those later. All right. We want to talk about the form. Is it a line? Is it linear? Is it curved? All right. Does it have some other sort of function? Like, is it exponential? Does it kind of come down and then kind of stay down? Or does it go up and go up really fast? All right. And then we want to talk about the strength. Is there a very clear pattern or not so much a clear pattern? So we could say it has strong, moderate, or weak. And we'll go over that a little bit more in some other slides to come here. So like if we're to look at this guy here, 
Well, the direction is probably pretty easy. It looks like if I were to take this and just kind of say, where's most of the data? Well, where's most of the data is in this blob right there. And that blob goes up. So as we go over, it goes up. So this would be positive. All right, unusual. These, these might be some outliers up here. Notice I'm not saying that they are outliers. I'm saying that they may be outliers. All right. I never really want to take a stand on outliers unless it's ex extremely obvious that some point is like way far away. Like if we had a point over here, then we could say, okay, looks like we got an outlier there. All right. Form. Does it make a line? Does it make a parabola? Is it curved? Well, it looks kind of, kind of like these are lining up. So my guess here would be linear. All right. And strength, is there a clear pattern or not so much? Well, this looks kind of, it looks pretty clear like that these are all pretty close together as we're going up. So I would say that this is either strong or I'd say it's a moderate, moderate pattern. So we could say it is a strong, linear, positive relation. All right. So we could just put all those words together strong, linear, positive relationship. All right, so then we've done all of DUFFs except for the outlier part in like four words. All right, we'd probably want to put context in there, so don't forget context. Don't forget our BS, be specific context. All right. So let's take a look at some graphs and we'll do a little bit of describing them. So here we have temperature versus ice cream sales. All right, so we wanna do our DUFFs here, D-U-F-S. So remember our D is direction. It looks like we are going up. So as we go over to the right, our graph goes up, so it's positive. Unusual, are there any points very far away? Not really. So we want to say nothing unusual. We do actually want to actually state that. Right. Should be an un in front of there. Unusual. There we go. All right. So with the other graphs, we didn't necessarily have to say that. With this one, we, we with the linear ones, we do want to actually say nothing unusual if there is nothing unusual. The form, these line up pretty well. So I would say linear. Strength, they are pretty close together if I make a line here. So that would be strong. So we have a strong, linear, positive relationship. Between temperature and ice cream sales. All right, there we go. All right. And there's nothing unusual about it. You could probably just say there's nothing unusual about it, but we've got strong, we've got linear, we've got positive, and we've got our context down there. Boom. All right. Now, do we think that it being hot outside causes people to buy more ice cream? Or do you think that there's another variable lurking in the background here? I would say there's probably another variable lurking in the background. Like, you know, if it's hotter out, it's more likely to be sunny. You're probably more likely to be outside. And if you're outside, you're probably more likely to you know, see the ice cream man and buy ice cream. Who knows? Or you're more likely to be going out to the grocery store. All right, let's take a look at the other graph here. So we've got miles per gallon versus weight. So we're talking about of a car here. So cars get certain miles per gallon for a certain weight. And it looks like the more something weighs, the less miles per gallon. So as we go over... To the right, it looks like our graph, our data is going down. So our direction here would be negative. All right, unusual. Well, I mean, there's some points that are far away, but there's nothing that's like jumping out at me screaming that it's way far away. So nothing unusual. All right, form. I mean, we could say this is a line. You also could say that this is exponential. Like it's kind of coming down like this, like a curve. So we could say linear or exponentially decreasing. You got to remember your graphs from like pre-calc or algebra two. 
Right? Linear would probably be okay. Strength, yeah, it looks pretty good. I mean, most of the data values are pretty close. They're not scattered all about. They're all kind of like within, or almost all within this little shape here. So, I mean, that's, that's all pretty close. So I'd say that's pretty strong. All right, and then we can put it together in our sentence. We can say there's a strong negative linear or exponential relationship between weight of a car and its miles per gallon. All right, the negative tells us that it's going down as the weight goes up. All right, so this is useful stuff. All right? People do this all the time in scientific fields. I actually got paid to do this when I was living in Chicago and working there. Uh, I got to analyze whether an assessment that we had made at the school, which we called our fall exam, was good at predicting ACT scores. So I took the data from the last, the previous year, and I put all my students on there and said, okay, what did they get on that fall exam versus what did they get on their ACT score? And I made a line of best fit. So that's what we do with this stuff is we take it and we turn it into lines. And then once we get the lines, we get some more data that goes with it. And the line tells us, you know, is it a good predictor or is it not a good predictor? So this was the math test. So I was involved in writing that. And this was the reading test. So this was for reading. All right. So which one do you think is a better predictor? Which one looks like it has a stronger relationship? All right. Well, the way we tell usually is which ones are closer to the line. All right. So the ones that are closer to the line, to me, look like, why doesn't it want to let me write here? No, it doesn't like my pen anymore. There we go. Looks like the math is a lot closer to the line than the English or the reading, which is kind of way up all over the place. All right. So this stuff can be used to determine, you know, what's better, what's, what's a better predictor. And that's important when you're trying to predict something. All right. So we'll talk more about how we come up with those lines and what those other numbers were that was under those lines in the next one and how to actually make a scatter plot on our calculator. But that's it for now. So enjoy scatter plots for now.